Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great weekend. The stock market basically went out on Friday um, in a very strong note. Now I know that on the NASDAQ we were down 0.05% splitting hairs. On the Russell 2000 we were down 0.09%. But the bottom line is, is that we had a strong final two hour rally and we closed with the final one minute bar at the exact high of that final minute of the session. Now the NASDAQ 100 closed a little bit off of that high point of its final minute bar, and so did the Dow Jones uh, transportation average. But the Dow Jones transportation average on Friday had the best bar. As you can see, it opened strong and rallied throughout the day on above average volume, producing a pocket pivot point signal. And it also had a strong final minute and final two hours. The NYC and S&P 500 were the best. And as you can see, the New York Stock Exchange basically just a little bit away from closing at the high of the day. You can see that it's producing a pocket pivot point signal today. However, volume was actually lower according to MarketSmith. And that's pretty odd that volume was lower on the S&P 500 and NASDAQ on an options expiration day. So pretty crazy overall, but that is what we did in fact have. But the S&P 500, same similar situation. You can see it closing pretty much near the highs and a strong final minute, final hour. And the Dow Jones Industrial Average, that was the best one. As you can see, uh, it also closed near its high of the day. We have 18, 272.56, just slightly off the high of the day. So strong action overall for the indexes. Excellent follow through to Thursday's breakout. If we didn't rally today, the one thing you don't want to see is a big sell off and the NASDAQ and Russell 2000 were the weak ones. And as you can see, they barely sold off and had a nice rally off the intraday lows. So everything is looking good. We also still have a hedge on in TZA, but the, that'll be taken off once TZA closes below this level and then this level the 427 low a day and the 429 low a day, but we're keeping that one on. And intraday, my DRV, uh, my first sell stop was moved up from 2392 to 2418. It opened at 24, so obviously it was removed immediately. My final sell stop remains at 2313, but I might go ahead and just move it up to 2325 because it's already showing weakness. And as you can see, the price is below the 20-day moving average. So more than likely, 2325 is going to become my final cut loss level on DRV. Outside of that, every single stock that we hold did well. And speaking of that kind of stuff, remember like whenever we got knocked out of score? Look at score now. SSNC, look at it holding up now. EPAM, look at it reversing now. And then look at our um, most recent one that we sold, AMCX. If you want to add AMCX back, you can. But I'm still not in love with this arithmetic chart pattern. It basically has failed its April Darvis box. So I'm not interested in re-adding back AMCX. But once again, another one that we sold off that's now in a buyable position. And then also, speaking of that, new long position, BSFT. Remember this guy? This was a former long position. Back here, I do believe, is where we went long. I got shaken out of it here, but it then failed even worse later on. And then, of course, two days later, boom, gap up. It's pulled back on lighter trade, and it's starting to bounce above its 50-day moving average. It's maintained max green bop the entire time. This is a very high-quality canceling stock, and it's obviously also in the max green bop for five-day scan. So since we're not under a buy signal across the board, I can't go 2.5, you know, and then another 2.5 for 5%. But, you know, to get crazy, because with a chart like this, that's when I would normally push it under a buy signal when we're hitting all-time highs. Um, on certain ad signals, it's not just going to be 1%. It'll be 2.5% additional ad. So BSFT, though, 2.5% for a canceling signal, 1% for it being in the BOP max green for five days scan, but it's a beautiful price pattern, very little risk, huge upside potential reward if we are right. And then AZO is producing a pocket pivot point signal right at the 50 day moving average. I was surprised that this stock wasn't in my high price stock scans considering it's almost $700. However, that scan looks for stocks averaging over 500,000 shares a day. I think this one's like right around 250 or 280,000 shares a day. So, but AZO to me basically qualifies. So it's a 2.5% position, and you can add 1% if you want. But me, I'm just going to keep it 2.5% 
because it has earnings. I can't remember if it's the 26th or 28th, but earnings are coming up. They're not out of the way, and it's there's just too many random movements to want to increase it there. And then also IX. IX was a long signal back here. I went ahead and made it 2.5%, even though IX is no longer a canned slim quality stock as of the most recent quarterly earnings report. However, it used to be, probably will be again, it's a high quality stock overall in Japan. So sadly, my limits didn't get hit as it gapped up crazily. If I would have kept my limits on the book, they would have been hit on the 14th. However, we're getting a um, really, really, really strong ad signal today. Big surge in BOP to max green BOP, huge surge in volume, and price is so strong that it goes out at the high of the day. As an X can slim stock, it's good enough with the price volume BOP surge, even though it's not because my price volume BOP surge scan, um, just like that high price one with AZO demands 50,000 shares per day average traded. This stock obviously averages under 50,000, so IX is not including the price volume BOP scan, but still. I know that if my scan doesn't look for a minimum volume requirement, it's going to make it. So what I decided to do, since we're under a quad, uh, half by half neutral signal, 0.5% for being X can slimmer and to being a future can slimmer, but not a current can slimmer, 0.5% for it to actually being a price volume bop surge stock without it actually being one because of the volume overall. So 1% in IX, 2% in ASIO. 3.5% in BSFT, and if you want to add back AMCX, you can, but overall, things are looking good. And then also, Paul was all over MNGA in our chat room as a longer-term holding. However, short-term, he expected huge upside price movement. We're talking about it on the 7th, 8th, the 11th, the 12th, and then finally, on Friday, boom. So from the first day, Paul was talking about this stock intraday. The stock is up 72% in one, two, three, four, five, six trading sessions. So not bad at all. So there's still plenty of momentum out there and the small cap stocks. And I mean, we're looking for a couple more to possibly explode. CLRO might be one to watch intraday for a breakout above the recent highs with the max green bop. It's coiled as can be. CNSI is another one coiling with max green bop. And then TRCH looks like the most explosive after a huge move on huge volume with Max Green Bop. It's really settled down and quieted down. And if it just wants to get back to its old October highs, we're looking at a 300% plus move. So TRCH is definitely one we recommend watching intraday. And then, of course, some stocks like TKAI off the lows. There's just a lot of action out there currently.